What's up guys? We are back with another Cosmic Legions Book 1 of Alcatar review and we're taking a look at one of the Olek Thigars in this wave. Uh, this is also one of the figures that I was able to, to do a test shot review on. This is the Volcatar version of Oleg Thigar, so the fully armored version. He is, he is the character with the great distinction of having two figures in the same wave, which is a first for legions in general. Now, he comes in uh, the you know, standard mid-size packaging, I guess. We'll, we'll call this mid-size packaging, uh, deluxe packaging for the line. So you've got him there in the window. We've got that hologram look down there on the bottom. One spine gives you a highlight for his faction as well as his specific bio. The other spine gives us our Havalkatar Book 1 write-up. And then the back of the box uh, gives us all of that cross-sell for the entirety of Wave 1. So yeah, let's do it. Let's pull him out and take a look. And here we go, out of the package, our deluxe Oleg Thigar. This is, again, the Havalkatar version. So there are two versions of this guy in Cosmic Wave 1. And this version is going to round out the wave as far as reviews go. So, you know, kind of kind of going out on a bang a little bit because this figure is definitely a little bit more prominent than some of the others. He's a deluxe figure. He comes with a ton of accessories. And he is, in many ways, shaping up to be one of the main characters. There is definitely something important about him in the story anyway. So let's see what he can do, see how he moves around. He's fairly similar to the Grave Ring version, but he's not exactly because, obviously, the parts are different here. This is essentially... You know, the Grave Ring version of Oleg with some bug parts and with some sentry parts, things like that, because there's a lot of part sharing between those figures. He's got a head that can look up pretty decent. He can't really look down too much, but it, based on how the head is shaped, he still can. You got a little bit of tilt for some attitude, and you've got full rotation there. The backpack does kind of get in the way, but not enough to really worry about it. Arms out at the shoulders. Now this is an area where the space backpack is going to hinder him a little bit, but not too bad. You got your swivel there. We've got our single jointed elbow. You give you about 90 degrees. It has some rotation. You've also got gauntlet swivel, wrist swivel, and hinge. You can't hinge upward or outward too much because the plate on the gauntlet does cover that hand. Where he's really locked down is the torso, and this is the same thing for, uh, for the bugs for the Sphexians because of just how much stuff is going on down at this waist. He's got multiple layers of stuff here that are making up this belt. So he really can't do much more than swivel. Like there is a little bit of bobble there, but if you go too far, you're gonna pop him apart just like that. So really, he's very, very static, which is unfortunate, but at the same time, I don't feel like I'm gonna be too upset about it over time. It is just something to note. He is less mobile at that torso, at that waist, than other figures. Now, let's put them back together. As far as the legs go, they go out pretty much all the way. You do have to get these sort of like stirrups up and out of the way. They kick forward about that far too. This is all rubbery. You just gonna have to watch how you move it. They kick backwards. You've got your thigh twist up here. We've got our single jointed swiveling knee, and that's about 90 degrees. And then down at the ankles, it's normal Legion stuff. So you've got rotation at the top of the ankle. You've got really, really good rocker. And we've got really solid hinges down here as well. So he's, he's very par for the course. There's nothing, nothing new or nothing uh, we haven't already seen in Cosmic Wave 1. You know, I'm saying that, of course, because this is the last figure in the wave to, for me to talk about. But this is stuff I've already experienced at this point. These, these pieces are not new to me with this figure. The only real downside to what he can and can't do is gonna come with that waist because, again, he really can't do much. You can swivel and that's about it. And if, as you saw, if you push him too much or really any at all, he is gonna sort of pop apart at that waist because of all the layering going on that makes up this belt system. But the visuals on this guy make up for any shortcomings with articulation for me because I really feel like he has something a little bit extra here. And it's, it doesn't really come across that way because you know when you line him up with the other non-Legion builders, He's very par for the course, and that is to say he's covered in detail, covered in paint. But something about this color scheme makes him seem a little bit more, I don't know, gaudy than some of the other figures. This blue and orange combination, I mean, I'm definitely a fan of that color scheme to begin with. But the way they've accented this armor, because again, this is, this is all reuse, really. I mean, I guess it's not reuse. They all intended to do this with Wave 1. But it's really reuse across other figures. So he doesn't have a lot of unique armor, so to speak. You're not going to see a lot of stuff on him that's necessarily unique outside of his belt, which is an Olek thing right now. But I really, really love this color scheme. 
the, all the metallics, this blue and the orange, because of course blue and orange go together really, really well. So they pop and they, they contrast against each other very nicely. But the usage of the, the Sphexian torso with a different, you know, different uh, emblem piece in the middle there with the, you know, the normal armored arms and legs that we've seen so far, I think look fantastic. I really like these feet that he has. Those look really good, sort of, you know, mecha feet that he's got down there. And then, of course, just the just the slight usage of some non-armored parts for the legs do work really well. So you've got these orange, uh, you know, just sort of pants, really, that do have a little bit of a wash on them to bring out some of that textured sculpt that's in there. But the color scheme, the mix of parts, and the patterning on these colors in particular really work. The way that they've, you know, shaded in some of, like, the textured pieces here, the way everything is layered with the orange, the grays, the blacks, and the blues absolutely pops. Looks so good. I love the belt that he has. I mean, it's 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 the unique thing across the Olek figures is having this belt. So there is extra stuff on here in terms of like the pieces, like the you know the, the stirrups, whatever you want to call them, the big the big old cod piece that hangs down uh, super low. So it is really different and unique across the other figures. He does have the space backpack on, and this is a figure that you can take it off. Like it's removable, just like any other figure, of course. This is one that is probably not going to be one you're going to want to take off because of what they do to make him seem a little bit bigger is give him a bigger neck. And as a result, if you take that off, he's going to look kind of going to look kind of lanky and kind of weird. But this is easily the coolest looking of the backpacks to me because of the color scheme. This metallic blue, the sort of slight shimmer in that gray, and then the orange absolutely works. Looks fantastic. I'm really happy with that. Again, you know, you could take it off and put it on a different figure if you wanted to just give them a splash of color as well. And then, like I said, he does have a different system for what they did to make his to make his presence seem a little bit more impactful, is they gave him a different neck. So this is actually a separate piece. You can take this whole thing out, and it does give him an elongated look. So he's got a he's got a taller neck, you know, he's got a little bit more space in between his torso and where the actual bottom of the head starts. So it does make him look a little bit a little bit lanky if you take that backpack off but he looks really good with it. It fills up it fills up that space really nicely when you have the neck there. And then he's got one of, you know, one of the cooler head sculpts in the line so far. I really like this design for, you know, him as a as a as a character or him as a species. I really like this, the little emblem on the forehead, all of the shading, all of the wash, tons of detail, all of that scaly craggy texture. And then again, more of that orange and the blue contrast. And this head is also, of course, different from the, the Grave Ring Olek, where he sort of changes while he's in there. And he gets, you know, he gets like a little bit of a difference when it comes to the horns and the things that are, that are trailing off the back of his head. So this is kind of like, you know, the earlier version. And then the Grave Ring is what he sort of becomes, or as he sort of changes and becomes a little bit different. So just to, you know, through and through, really awesome look. Excellent mix of parts and just tons of great paintwork. It's it's normal horseman stuff, but it's no less exciting to see every single time we get a new figure. Now for some size comparisons, let's do some other cosmic figures. So we've got our Grave Ring Olek here on the right. And you can see these are very similar figures. I mean, from the waist down, they're almost entirely the same figure. Hands and feet are different. Of course, the arms and the torso are different and then that head, but they do share a lot of parts still. And then we've got our Tusk Science Officer here, and this is mostly to show the difference in size. They're not super, super different, but that neck addition does pop his head up just enough to make him seem a lot larger than he is, when in reality, he is almost entirely very similar to the Tusk Science Officer and the Tusk Sentry. Let's do some other lines, so let's move Olek aside. Here is a figure arts. There is Superhero Piccolo. Let's do a Super 7 Turtle. Here is... Leo. Let's do a Marvel Legend. Here is Banshee for a standard, standard, current standard Marvel Legend. Let's do a Mezco, and it's going to be, you know, Conan as usual. There's Conan. And then let's do, why not? Let's do one weird one. Here is, if you just want to get crazy with your figures, there is a Boss Fight Studio Fraggle Rock Doozer figure. So, I mean, this guy is a 1.0 figure still. He's very much in line with the overwhelming majority of not just Cosmic Legions, but Legions in general. However, he is slightly taller than normal just by virtue of having that unique neck piece that pops him up just about another quarter inch, third of an inch or so. Now, as far as accessories goes, Olek is a deluxe figure in this configuration. 
and deluxe in this instance means a lot of accessories. So to start with, we do get some extra head, neck type of equipment. I'm gonna take this head off to start with because we do get an extra neck and the neck is one of the things that makes him a little bit taller than other figures and you do get a swappable piece as a result. So here's our standard one, the exposed neck, and then you get the armored neck. And of course it works with this head, but it also works with another head that we get that is also, you know, armored and helmeted, more in line with what we get with like the Tusk Legion Builder. So it's, it's a fully encapsulated helmet. It's got his color scheme and it's got an orange removable visor here. And then you can see his face and head within, which I really like. And it is really nicely sized too. It does feel like this head is inside here based on how well this is sculpted. Uh, I really like that. And then I also, of course, like the color scheme choice for this visor. Now he does also include the sort of standard bubble visor that we get with some of the other figures too. I'm gonna pop this off and we're gonna put the other head back on because I do feel like the bubble dome is more in line with the open head, just based on how, how much larger this one is. It will work, but it's not as mobile inside, if that makes any sense. Actually, let's take this off, and it would be smarter to put it on. And I'm just going to sort of put it there for now. But then you've got your, your bubble dome here, you know, like your more traditional astronaut-style helmet, and you've got his head inside. And it is done up in his color scheme, of course. These are a little bit tricky to get going at first. Like, you've got to really play around them to figure out exactly how these work. Once you get them, they, they stay pretty well. And again, it is the same thing that comes with, uh, with like, the Sentry. So if you wanted to, you could swap them out. If you wanted to put something a little bit more colorful on your science officer or whatever, if you wanted to paint up one of the Sentries and use it on Olek, uh, you could if you wanted to give him a different kind of color scheme. So there are a lot of different options there. You've got two necks, you've got two heads, and you've got the bubble dome. He comes with a bunch of hands also. Uh, you've got laterally hinged gripping hands on him in the box. You get a set of vertical gripping hands. You get a set of vertical trigger hands. And you get a set of lateral trigger hands. I do wish that there would have been some fists included here, but you still get a lot of stuff. Uh, we do get the little gauntlet peg blasters. So you get a set of those. We get a set of the standard just sidearm blasters. And again, uh, you know, you can use because he does come with these also, like everybody really. He does have the little pegs. So you can put one of these in here and then peg it onto his belt if you wanted to stow it. So you get two of these. We get the blaster rifle. And we get this big monster. So this is the same gun that comes with Vorga, but it is different. So this gun is modular to a degree. This piece comes off at the end, and this is this is one of the key changes. So his does look more like a tool than, than anything else. It doesn't really look like a gun to me. It looks like mining equipment. Vorga's has an actual blaster on the end. And then Vorga's also has like the energy band that connects to her backpack. This piece comes off, and this is where that would go. So if you wanted to swap this out with hers or vice versa, uh, you can do that, and both of them can look like they belong with either figure. I do really like the modularity. It's not a huge amount of stuff, but it's enough to make it work across different figures. Not to mention the fact that this is just a cool-looking gun or tool or whatever it's supposed to be. And then he also comes with, you know, like one of my favorite things, and I'm going to keep saying this until, until we stop getting them, I guess. He gets one of the little hologram guys, which I really like. They're just different. They're unique. And of course, they add for a little bit of, of display value because you don't have to have your figures, you know, fighting. He could just be standing there getting a message or whatever. And I also like just little translucent hologram -y kind of stuff like this. There are quite a few of them in this wave so far. And of course, you can mix and match across all of the figures that use the ports. So he does come with a lot of stuff. Like there is no disputing it. He is truly a deluxe figure because he has a hands pack. He basically has a weapons pack. And he might as well have a head and neck pack. There's so many different options in here to really play with, not to mention the fact that some of these are, of course, going to be swappable with the other Olek, depending on what you want to do with them. So yeah, overall, I mean, big shot coming, right? This is a fantastic figure, easily one of the better ones in the wave. And that's, I'm not saying that because there's bad figures in the wave. I mean, I have a feeling a lot of a lot of people are just going to say cosmic wave one, top 10 of the year, and I'm done. And this guy is, is chief among them. He is fantastic. Great mix of parts, Tons and tons of great sculpting. I mean, if you've messed with the other figures in the wave, you know what to expect when it comes to his sculpt and his level of detail. Tons of paint, so much intricate paintwork. 
lots of good contrasting, complementing colors at the same time, and just an awesome look and feel. I love the, you know, the mecha spacesuit design that we've got going on here. I really like the design for the Oleg heads. And then, of course, he is a deluxe figure that comes with a tremendous amount of accessories. And I really can't stress that enough. You get kind of everything with this guy when it comes to accessories. You get guns, you get hands, you get heads, you get the you get the backpack, you get the dome, you get all of the major players when it comes to the accessories we've seen throughout Cosmic Wave 1. So that's going to do it for this look at the Four Horsemen Studios Cosmic Legions Wave 1 Olek Thygar Valkatar version. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time.